What's going on guys, Billy here, and in a previous video, I shared the entire process of how to create a 2D map with DJI's entire ecosystem of mapping tools. This involved setting up a flight plan in Pilot 2, choosing a drone to actually run your mission and collect your images, and then we stitched all of those photos together with Terra to make an orthomosaic 2D map that can be used to document the area and analyze using digital tools. Now using this same process with a couple of different practices added, we're going to make a 3D model. At the end of the video, we'll also touch slightly on point clouds made with DJI's L2 payload, so let's get into it. Now, I teased an example of the final product of one of these 3D models in that previous video I made of the SS United States because it's actually slated to leave Philly with an undetermined future. So I wanted to document the current status of this ship. I also thought that this would be a great example to share because of how incredibly intricate a ship like this is with a sloped body, the smokestacks, and all of the little bars and antennas. This here is a model that was created using the method and steps that I'm going to show you here in this video. So why don't we get started? So first thing that we need to do is choose our hardware or the drone and payload that we're going to use to fly and capture the images on this mission. Now the way I see it, we've got four different options. The Mavic 3 Enterprise line, the Matrice 3D line, the Matrice 30 line, or the Matrice 350 line. To get more specific, the Mavic 3 Enterprise is a great all-around mapping and modeling solution because it's lightweight, easy to deploy, and has a high-resolution camera with a mechanical shutter. This is perfect for running automated missions because the flight time of over 40 minutes lets you collect a ton of data from one flight. The Mavic 3 Thermal, on the other hand, can still be used to map. It's got the same body, the same airframe, but the color camera sensor on this payload doesn't have a mechanical shutter. The M350 is another option that offers a more tailored experience depending on your needs thanks to the swappable payloads. For example, the L2 payload has a LiDAR sensor that allows for a higher fidelity point cloud data collection. DJI also offers the P1 payload that uses a full frame sensor for high resolution image capture and supports different lenses to make ultra high resolution maps and models. The Matrice 30, on the other hand, can be used for mapping and modeling, but the camera on that drone doesn't have the mechanical shutter of the Mavic 3 and doesn't have the swappable payload support like its bigger brother, the Matrice 350. So if you have one of these drones, sure, you can use it for mapping, but it's not going to be the best option out there. The Matrice 3D is also a good option, although you'll likely only be using this in coordination with the Dock 2 rather than as a standalone drone. Nonetheless, the mechanical shutter will definitely get you a good result as the camera is equivalent to the Mavic 3 Enterprise's payload. So while DJI's entire lineup of Enterprise drones is capable of mapping, modeling, and general data collection, for our use case, making a map and model with Terra, the two best options will be the Mavic 3 Enterprise or the M350 with the L2 or the P1 payload. Now for this video, for the example that I share with you, I'll be using the Mavic 3 Enterprise, but as we get towards the end of the video, I'll quickly share some examples using the L2 of that SS United States ship that I shared with you in the beginning, which should be fun to look at. All right, now jumping in to the first true step to creating our 3D model, it's planning the mission our drone is going to fly. This construction site just outside of Philadelphia is going to be our example for this video as they came through and completely demolished the old building that was here to make way for new construction that I think is going to be apartments, condos, or it might be a new shopping facility. But regardless, we're going to create a 3D model of this area so that we can document and remember what it looks like during this phase of construction. Now remember, we're going to be using a DJI's entire software and hardware suite of products in order to make this 3D model. So the pipeline is vertically integrated, giving us a seamless transition from planning the mission to actually running the mission, flying the drone, and processing all of our data at the end. Now, in order to plan our mission, we'll first grab our remote controller and jump into the Pilot 2 application. From here, tap on Flight Route, which brings us to our library of previous missions, and then we'll press on the plus icon in the top right corner and create a route. From here, we'll select Area Route, amongst all the other options available. From here, once the map view has been pulled up and you've scrolled over to your location, it's time to set up our mission so the drone knows where to fly, and we want to set up our mission parameters so the drone knows what to do. So from here, we're just going to tap on the screen to set up our area. It's going to be around the old structure. So this is the old building that was there. It was an old department store. We can go and fine tune our areas by just tapping on the screen, choosing each location, and this is going to set up the general flight area that our drone is going to fly in. So once you've got our area all set up, we can press on the check mark in the top left corner and choose the drone we want to use, which in this case is, of course, the Mavic 3 Enterprise. 
We'll tap on OK. Now from here, the first thing we need to do is select Oblique Collection to make our 3D model. Remember, the Ortho Collection is just going to be a 2D top-down model. It doesn't capture any 3D imagery. So the the 3D model you get from that is not going to be as good because it's not tuned for that type of mission. But if we go and if we zoom out on Oblique Collection, you'll notice the drone actually flies outside of the mission parameters because the gimbal is pitched at a 45 degree angle to capture the sides of the structures. Imagine you have a building. In order to make a 3D model of it, you need to capture the sides of it. So the drone flies at a at a uh, angle with the camera pitched down so it can capture every side of the building. Now you'll also notice that the drone is going to make two passes, so it goes one way, and then on the other end, it flips the other way so that it can go and capture every side of all the structures, giving you a highly detailed 3D image. Now notice the ortho GSD here, the centimeters per pixel, is going to be directly related to your flight altitude. So if we go and scroll down and say, change our flight altitude of 600 feet, we'll bump that down to 300 feet. We now have a higher resolution overall 2D map and 3D model because we're flying lower to the ground, the camera's closer to the objects that we're taking photos of, so therefore it's gonna be a higher resolution image, but it is going to increase the amount of photos we need to take and the amount of time the drone has to fly for a significant overlap. So. We have a, an estimated duration of 2 minutes and 10 seconds on one leg of the flight. It's going to take 64 photos. And on the other leg, it's going to be a minute and 43 seconds, and it's going to capture 87 photos. So that pretty much wraps up our setup of this mission. I think that specifically for this flight, I'm going to make it do a flight height of 250 feet. I do know that around that area, they have some higher machinery that could get in the way. So 250 feet sounds good. And yeah, from there, I've got my upon completion task set to return home. So once the drone is done, it's gonna fly and come back. But I think now that we're all set up, let's go outside, run the mission and capture our data. <laughs> Now it's time for what I would say is the easiest part of this process, allowing the drone to do all the work for us by flying the automated mission that we've created. So once you get on site and you've got your drone set up, we'll jump into the Pilot 2 application, find the mission we've created, do one last check to make sure that it's going to cover the area that we intend to make our model of, go over the mapping checklist to make sure that everything is set properly, upload our mission, and then press start to turn over all control to the drone so it can take off and follow the flight plan that we've set up. Now remember, for this specific mission, we're going to be running a crosshatch grid, so it's going to fly one way with the gimbal pitched downwards to collect the top and sides of the building, in this case, that we'll be capturing, and then it's going to fly the opposite way so that it can capture the other sides to make a full 3D model. Now, because the area that I'm capturing is fairly small and I've got the speed of the drone pumped up a little bit, it's going to be a fairly quick mission. I think it's only six minutes per side so the drone is going to do its thing it's going to fly along the path that i've selected and it's going to be taking photos that i can then upload and stitch later now what i would recommend is jumping into the manual flight mode take control with the sticks and grab some extra images just in case so that we can build up this 3d model of some of the more intricate areas so what i'd recommend is using the time shot on a two second interval and make sure you're taking jpeg photos not raw photographs so that you can upload these and help terra create a nice 3d model Model. What I would recommend doing is just flying around in circles in the areas that you think need a little bit more help. Again, these are the more intricate areas. So in the case of this job site, it's the areas that I think there's a bunch of really little details like railings and scaffolding that could use some help with closer images so that we get a nice 3D model processed. <music> Now for the final step, processing all of our data and using the images that we've taken to construct our 3D model using DJI Terra. The thing that I love about this application and this piece of software is that it's all on device processing. So you don't have to send your images away to a cloud server to be processed and then they send it back to you or they give you some sort of web app to view that model or map in. No, everything is handled directly on the computer, which is really great because I've been on the road sometimes trying to upload data that I just simply can't because I have gigabytes and gigabytes that can't be uploaded over cellular or a weak Wi-Fi connection. I need a strong internet connection. And for those times, I'm going to be really happy to have Terra so that I can process everything right on the laptop that I have in front of me. So jumping into the software here, this is kind of the main screen that you're greeted with. When we want to upload all of our data, we'll choose new mission in the bottom. We'll go to visible light. We'll name this something like construction example. If I can spell construction example. From here, we're going to tap on the folder icon in the top right corner 
on the top right corner under photos tap on add folder now these two folders i have here are the the first one is the automated mission and then the second one is a set of photos that i uploaded that i took manually so i had them split up into two separate folders so what i'll do in this case is actually uh you know if i go back here i'll choose my mavic 3 enterprise and that'll be the folder that i select so now it's going to pull all the images from that folder within the two subfolders and as you can see it already lines them all up right there you can see the automated grid pattern it ran and then my circles that i ran to add those extra uh photos in there now on the right side we'll choose what we want the software to process so for this case we're not going to be processing a 2d map we're going to be processing a 3d model we'll select that toggle if you did want to uh, process a 2d map you could do both from this same set of images there's enough data there to construct a 2d model but for the sake of this video we'll just be constructing the 3d model now you can choose your resolution you can do high medium or low you can also choose the scene so normal circle or power lines for this use case i'll be doing normal and then from there you're pretty much ready to go you can choose any output formats that you might want if you want to send a file to somebody um, and then there are some other advanced options to choose from if you need but from here once we have 3d model selected we'll tap on start reconstruction in the bottom right corner go over this checklist press on OK and now it's up to the software to just process this model now luckily I've already processed it so we don't need to sit here and watch it I've already got construction 3d model here we'll enter our project and you'll notice that off the bat there is a lot of area and that's because there's a lot of overlap from the way that the camera captured so we could go and trim this out but what I am most interested in is the construction site in the middle here which is now in a full 3d model and using this software by dragging the mouse around holding control and dragging the mouse around using our zoom wheel here we can go and look at this entire construction site in 3d which looks great it's so cool to be able to see all of the machinery. It's so cool to be able to see all the different floors and levels of the building. It's great to be able to see like the stockpiles on the edges here. It's just so cool to have this entire site completely digitized so that me as somebody who might be a project manager or somebody that's working with a construction company can go back to specific days and see what the entire site looked like. Now, sure, a 2D map would be really cool, but it doesn't give you this definition and detail to see how high specific parts are of the construction. Um, it won't be able to show you the different floors the different intricate materials on the ground i mean really this is very cool now from this point right here i could still go to my output format and try and output with any of the models or any of the file types that i might need to send this out so in terms of this 3d model it is looking very good you can of course move it around i also have to say that this was just a medium reconstruction i didn't do a high resolution construction so that i could get through that process much faster if you want i will leave this entire project down in the description for you guys to download if you want to go and get Terra and try uploading all this data for yourself also I want to back out here and just show you the uh, SS United States because I think that that is a fairly cool project so again we did a full 3d model of this this is not paid work this was just something I wanted to do to have this but again you can just see the contour of the of the boat on the side here you can see all of the intricate details if we zoom in like all the small little pieces on the deck here this again is a ship that is probably going to be moved and sunk to be a natural reef for fish so it's really cool to have this as a 3d model this is such a great piece of history and again Terra did an awesome job at stitching all this together to make a perfect 3d model now what I do want to do here to wrap up the video is go over point cloud with the l2 so let's transition over to that So the final 3D model of the SS United States that I shared was made with the Mavic 3 Enterprise, but I also spent some time capturing the area with the L2 payload on the Matrice 350 for a more accurate point cloud. I did a mixture of automated and manual flights to try and cover as much of the area as possible and was left with some pretty fascinating real-time results. A point cloud is important when making 3D models as it provides a highly accurate 3D representation of a real-world object. It's able to capture the environment with greater detail as it's not only capturing data through the color images it captures it also uses the lidar sensor to determine depth distance and the general space this is why the l2 is the right tool to use for this job as it has all the necessary hardware to create a 3d model and point cloud when using the l2 you can think of it as a paintbrush so as you capture the area it uses the lidar sensor to gather data that gets put together to make a point cloud the pilot 2 app shows a real-time view of not only the color camera but also the point cloud being made this can be displayed as a heat map or in a color view which lets you easily identify areas that might 
might have holes or need more attention. Right within the Pilot 2 app, you can examine your work and manipulate the point cloud that you've just created, which feels so fluid. It's crazy how fast it can generate a preview, but it's nice to have a real-time, instant look at what you've generated so you can determine if you need to do another capture or if you can bring it back to the Terra software on your computer for processing. So, the way I see it, when making a 3D model with a drone, there's two different routes that you can go. If you just want to document the area, make a digital twin of, let's say, your job site so that you can look around and see what it looked like on that exact day at that exact time that all the images were captured, then using a Mavic 3 Enterprise with just a color camera is going to give you a great result. If you instead want to take actionable data from that 3D model, so if you want to determine depth, elevation, if you want to take measurements, then you might want a higher fidelity point cloud to do so to get much more accurate measurements. So therefore, you'd want to use something like the L2 that has the LiDAR sensor built in. Nonetheless, that is my process for making a 3D model using DJI's entire ecosystem of mapping tools, so their hardware as well as their software. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.